I'm Sean Snaith. Welcome to Money Talks America. Today's show is all about Ben, my golden retriever. Well, not, not just Ben, but everybody's pet in the pet industry. It's a major force in our economy, and it's the topic of today's Money Talks America. We're an affiliated veterinary specialist, a renowned veterinary hospital in Maitland, Florida. AVS specializes in surgery, internal medicine, neurology, radiology, and rehabilitation. We're going to take a closer look at the economy of the pet industry. While so many industries have struggled during this recession, the pet industry has actually grown. And joining me now is Money Talks America correspondent Ed Hyland with a look at the data. Sean, the numbers are absolutely staggering. There's about 77 and a half million dogs owned by people in this country, about 94 million cats. And we love our pets so much, even during a recession, we are willing to spend money on them. For many of us, from the time we were little, a pet was part of the family. Who's taking care of whom? Actually, of course, it's mom who takes care of both. 62% of U.S. households own a pet, which equates to 71.4 million homes. According to the American Pet Products Association, spending on animals, food, supplies, veterinary care, grooming, boarding, and pet sitting jumped to a $45.5 billion business in America last year, a number expected to increase by 5% in 2010. The numbers proclaim more than just a responsibility. My cat and my dog are my very best friends, next to my wife and family, of course. The top expense for an animal owner is food, organic, all natural, home cooked, homeopathic, even vegetarian diets eat up about $18.3 billion. You know, dogs are carnivores. So they like to eat meat. So. Vet care is an $11 billion investment. Medical advances have helped pets live longer and made for a much broader and more elaborate menu of services, from CAT scans, root canals, and cancer surgery, to antibiotics, antidepressants, and even grief counseling. Pet owners have more medical choices and spending options than ever before. That spending continues on into the afterlife. Live animal purchases are an almost $13 billion expense, and celebrity backing aims to reach those homes currently in need of another family member. Hi, it's Pia and Pickles with Drew Barrymore. And Sean, I should make note that the cost of spaying or neutering a pet is far less than the cost of raising puppies or kittens for a year. So Bob Barker was giving sage advice all those years. Yes, indeed. Many years, indeed. Ed, do you have a pet? Yes, yes. I have a friend for, uh, for Ben. Her name is Belle. She's been with us 13 years. She was an adoptee, and uh, we got her from a rescue area. So uh, she was a, a great investment at about $40 at the time. So uh, that's how we spent our money, and she's been a wonderful joy in our lives. Well, I don't think about that initial investment. It's the return on the investment. It's hard to quantify that, isn't it? You can't measure love. Thanks, Ed. Much of the spending in the pet industry takes place at the annual Global Pet Expo presented by the American Pet Products Association and the Pet Industry Distribution Association. Money Talks America correspondent Carrie Farinak joins us now with that story. Carrie? Thanks, Sean. We're on the show floor here at Global Pet Expo 2010 where more than 5,000 buyers have come with one thing on their mind, doing business. Very nice Buyers from pet stores around the country come to Global Pet Expo to stock their shelves for the entire year. Well, I'm an owner of a Petland shop, which is a, a franchise specialty pet outlet, and I'm here to uh, check out all the great new products that people have and see what we can add to our inventory to keep our customers happy. We found a lot of new products that we are certainly going to hopefully close before we leave the show. I always make deals when I'm here. <laughs> So we come here, get good ideas, get good feedback, and we're able to talk with all of the people who specialize in these products in the whole pet industry. So it's one place to get a lot of information. There's energy and optimism on this show floor you just don't see at other conventions. 
largely because the industry is doing so well. Experts say business is booming in the pet industry because people have a special connection with their pets. In many ways, they actually humanize the animals. I'm a, I'm a, a baby boomer. I'm a uh, helicopter parent. I hovered over my kids when, when they were growing up. As the kids left home and moved out, uh, my wife and I needed something else to hover over. So Dakota came into our lives, uh, our golden retriever. And all the baby boomers are doing the same thing. The pets are that important to them, and they're taking the place of kids. So this whole humanization trend you've, you've always heard about, that's reached a tipping point in the past. That's, you don't even talk about that anymore. We have humanized our pets. TV host and pet enthusiast Rachel Ray was here to accept an award. She acknowledges the importance of pets in people's lives. I have a lot of important relationships in my life. My relationship with my viewers and my readers is built on trust. My relationship um, with, with my family, of course, is built on love and devotion. But my most profound relationship is the one that I have with my dog, Isabu. She... Um, I, I just can't even think about her without uh, just getting overwhelmed with um, the best of everything there is in me. She brings out um, my sense of loyalty, my sense of compassion and empathy. This dog uh, teaches me my humanity. That's what she gives back to me every day. Not only do pet owners pamper their pets more than ever before, they're also more concerned about their pet's health and taking care of them naturally. New this year, APPA has added the Natural Pet, a section here on the show floor dedicated entirely to organic and eco-friendly pet products. From all natural food to organic shampoo, a new natural focus is driving innovation and product development for many companies. The industry is changing a lot and the, the natural and the holistic is growing. As long as people start to know more, you know, get to, to know the dogs, they, they want the dogs to be healthy and it's growing. So that was a, actually was a nice idea for them to put in the, this, this department, okay. this section. APPA predicts reducing the carbon paw print for pets will continue to be a trend in the industry for years to come. And based on what we're hearing here on the show floor, it looks like the pet industry is going to continue to grow through 2010 and for years to come. I'm Carrie Fairnack. Sean, back to you. When we come back, we'll talk to the medical director at AVS and a top executive from Nestle Purina. Welcome back to Money Talks America. According to the APPA, spending on veterinary care increased by 8.5% in 2009. I'm joined now by Dr. Yasik Dahan, medical director here at AVS. Doctor, thanks for joining us today. Did you see similar results last year in terms of revenue at your facility? No, definitely not. Uh, we probably saw approximately 10% decrease in our revenue. Um, but we are specialty hospital. So the types of services we offer are a little bit different from services offered in general practices. Uh, my impression is that uh, across the country, general practices did better. Uh, most of them stay flat or the better ones still showed some growth. Uh, but the specialty referral hospitals suffered more. Why is that? Is, is some of what you're doing here elective or is just people get to the point and they're faced with such a high cost procedure that, that given the economic situation they just can't afford to do it or a mixture of that? I think it's a combination of things. Um, general practices provide a lot of routine care, uh, flea pre prevention, heartworm prevention, routine vaccinations and most of the people that care about their pets are still able to afford it and budget for it. Um, specialty hospitals and emergency clinics provide uh, typically services that are more expensive. Some of them are more elective. For example, we do a lot of joint surgeries uh, for um, arthritis or uh, dogs with ruptured ACL ligament. Um, and those procedures, those conditions can be treated medically. 
not as well as with surgery, but they can still be managed medically. So a lot of people elect medical management versus surgery. In lieu of it. Okay, and so spending uh, is less as a result. Now we've just gone through a, a whole healthcare debate and, and uh, on, on the doorstep to reform for, for human healthcare. And at the center of this debate was health insurance. Now, one of the developments fairly recently has been, been the evolution of a pet insurance industry. Could you talk a little bit about that industry, about its size and scope and what role it plays here? Um, pet insurance is definitely increasing um, in frequency, but it's still, uh, still only a very small number of uh, clients have it for their pets. Uh, my best estimate here in Central Florida would be approximately 1% of how pet owners have pet insurance. Um, so it's a very small number of, of patients. I think the advantage, most of the veterinary hospitals require payment at the time of service. Um, the benefit of it is that um, it keeps the prices down relative to human healthcare. Um, in human healthcare, most of the bills are paid by the insurance company and the user, end user doesn't even know the actual cost of the treatment. Uh, which is very different from veterinary medicine. That's interesting because we were chatting earlier as you showed me the facility and you've got a, an amazing array of equipment here. A lot of it is, is actually human uh, designed uh, equipment and, and we spoke about the cost and you said the price is the same as uh, if it were being purchased for, for use on, on human beings. So how do you keep costs down if you're paying the same high prices for that type of equipment? Uh, I think we have to be more efficient. Uh, the risk of malpractice lawsuits is smaller. So our liability, medical liability, malpractice insurance is a lot less expensive. Uh, currently, liability insurance for our specialists is only about $300 per year, which, would, which is minimal relative to what's being paid on the human side of, of healthcare. Well, that's interesting because we're, we're crazy about our pets here and I wonder if that, uh, that insurance, uh, lawsuit insurance is, is going to rise in the future. Have you seen large settlements associated with medical malpractice of our pets? Um, not yet, uh, but that may be coming in the future. It will definitely change uh, the way we practice veterinary medicine and it will probably result in higher prices as well. Now, so innovations in the field of veterinary med medicine, are they coming out of, uh, of the human medicine field? Or, I mean, how does the feedback work? Or, or are there specific uh, uh, techniques and, and developments that are just uh, veterinary in nature? I think it's a combination. Veterinary medicine changed dramatically over the last 20 years. Uh, when I started, when I finished my residency in orthopedic surgery in 92, um, and when I moved to Central Florida, the only piece of equipment that we had was an x-ray machine. Obviously, we had surgical equipment as well. Right now, we have MRI, CT scan, radiation. So things changed dramatically over the last 20 years. Um, a lot of it was driven by owners caring more for their pets. Um, it, changed, it, it changed by innovation, by new surgical techniques uh, developed by veterinarians and also by transfer of uh, technology from human side to veterinary side. Now, you know, we're talking about the, the recovery and the end of the recession nationally here in Florida. We're, we're forecasting that the, the recession has come to an end here in the first quarter of 2010. What are you seeing in the first couple months of this year in terms of business and, and, and revenues uh, as it compared to last? Um, the last six weeks were definitely a little bit busier than 2009. Um, my impression is that if this continues for another few weeks, we will be back to the level of 2008. And, and was 2008 the, the peak year prior to the recession? So That was the best year for us, yes, 2008. Have you had a change staffing at all, any layoffs uh, as a result of the recession, or have you um, maintained uh, your staff? We decreased the size of our staff. Uh, we didn't have any layoffs, but some people moved. Um, or resigned for personal reasons and their positions were not replaced. But we didn't have any layoffs. And in terms of expansion, is that uh, anything you're looking forward to? I mean, is this market, uh, once we get out of recession, continuing to grow? Is, is veterinary care going to become a bigger share of our economy? And, and if so, how do you plan for that? Um, right now, we don't have any immediate plans as far as expanding our hospital. Uh, we have right now approximately 18,000 square feet and that's sufficient to accommodate our needs. 
but you know I'm hoping that in year of year or two we, we may need to expand our building um, especially cancer care is becoming more and more important why is that I mean are we seeing uh, more cases of cancer or, or a greater willingness of people to try to treat it it's a combination of things um, our pets live to be older they don't die of distemper or rabies or, or other infectious diseases. We provide them with better supportive care or um, care maintenance or health man maintenance so they live to be older. And cancer is typically disease of older dogs and older people as well. Okay. Um, also, there are quite a few technological developments, for example, radiation treatment for dogs. So we have more options and better options for treatment of cancer in dogs. Well, during the tour, you showed me a cat that was receiving radiation treatment. Really, really fascinating to see. Uh, how expensive are treatments of some of these diseases? We've seen some pets that are undergoing orthopedic surgery, joint replacement. I and mean, how much money could a pet owner get into if they had a seriously ill pet? Quite a bit. Um, since we have more and more options as far as uh, treatment, since we have more and more technology, uh, treatment costs are definitely increasing. Um, a lot of surgeries that we do um, cost between three and four thousand dollars. That's the total cost of the treatment. Uh, radiation treatment for cancer can cost uh, six to eight thousand um, dollars. That's not all at once and if you think about the labor involved in treating that right. pet, that's really not that much. They frequently require daily radiation sessions for four weeks and they have to be anesthetized every day as well. And there is treatment planning involving MRI or CT scan. So, um, you know, the total cost for it is $8,000, but if you see what they receive for it, it's a fraction of what they would pay for it. Well, it was pretty labor intensive, as you said, the cat had to be anesthetized and had to remain still. So uh, yeah. a little different than a human getting that Absolutely. same treatment. Dr. Dahan, thank you so much for letting us come into AVS today and showing us around the facility. We appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thanks. Thank you. We'll be right back. Obviously, a veterinary hospital is going to spend a lot of money on pet food. In fact, all pet owners spend quite a bit of money on pet food. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. Joining us today to talk about this industry is Paul Cook, Vice President with Nestle Purina. Paul, thanks for being here today. Can you tell us a little bit about the state of the industry? Hi. Uh, just you know, really, the category has been, uh, been unbelievable for the last number of years. I mean, for almost 20 years now, the category has had consistent growth every year, year over year. And even last year, in one of the worst recessionary years in, in a long, long time, uh, the pet care category outperformed almost every other category that we compete in. I mean, it just truly is uh, an amazing story that during a recession, nothing's recession proof, but the resiliency of the pet category has truly been unbelievable. And we're, uh, we're uh, in a great business that has got uh, obviously great opportunity for growth and. We continue to ride that, and innovation renovation is really what makes it special. Why do you think the industry is faring so well? The pet category is a very personal, <laughs> emotional category. It's family-oriented. Uh, what The pet category has really evolved into becoming whatever the family is supporting. The lifestyle choices that families are making are carry over and become part of their four-legged family members. And the four-legged family members are focused on health and wellness, as are the, are, are the two-legged kids. Uh, whether it be around nutrition, uh, healthy weight, uh, seniors with glucosamine, puppy development products and so forth. So 
Uh, the consumer really, really is interested in making sure that they feed properly, that they feed nutritionally, and it's a complete and balanced diet. What are the latest trends in the pet food industry? Again, I think it's going to continue to develop on things that are important. I mean, the value equation goes well beyond just price. And consumers are looking for products that answer specific needs. Skin and coat, dental, weight management, and so forth. And I think that you'll see products like Beneful that continue to focus on, as we started with Beneful Original, and we got into Beneful Prepared Meals, which addresses the wet category, and then going into the small dogs. I think you're really going to see that the consumer uh, is demanding more and expecting more, and the value equation has got to have a, uh, a, a product value that they recognize and respect. Well, I understand that the, the green movement has actually had an impact on the pet industry. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. And again, as I mentioned, it's all around lifestyle changes, uh, choices. And again, it, with the pet being so much a part of the family, uh, as the family feeds, as, as, the, as, as mom or dad decides to feed the family, it's all around uh, healthy life, nutrition, uh, the obesity issue in, uh, in our country today, the same thing is prevalent across uh, the, the pets. And, uh, you know, it's like products like dog chow, you know, we, we have on our bag that if, if you feed your dog, chow products for their life, you can enhance their life by up to two years. I mean, that's a pretty powerful statement and one that very proud of. And it's, that's 10 years of research into a product that's been around for a long time. Paul Cook, Vice President with Nestle Purina, thank you for joining us. Sean, I want to thank you for this opportunity, share a little bit of the Purina success story with you, and uh, thank you very much for your time, and I hope you have a great day. As Dr. DeHaan told us, areas of specialty veterinary care have been impacted by the recession but other components of the pet industry are doing quite well. We had a chance to catch up with Dr. Martin Becker, also known as America's most beloved veterinarian. You may have seen him on ABC's Good Morning America. We wanted to ask him why he thought the pet industry was doing so well. We just don't uh, love our pets. We need our pets, you know, as that kind of salve for our soul during these times. And, and increasingly we're finding out that pets just don't make us feel good, they're actually good for us. I wrote a book called The Healing Power of Pets and they lower blood pressure, increase survivability of heart attacks, detect cancer, lower serum cholesterol. Uh, there's a whole series of decreased allergies and asthma in children. There's a whole line of health benefits that pets bring us. So we want to take care of that life support system that's cleverly disguised as a four-legged family member. So we're seeing a lot of money spent on pets. I'll tell you a shocking statistic I found out. There's more money spent on pets than all movies, all video games, and all music combined. And not by a cat's whisker, by a mile. 30% more spent on those three categories together on pets. And remember in the end of October 08, my God, the economy's going in the tank, everything is going down. Mm -hmm. Pet industry went up. Every quarter of 09, pet industry went up. First quarter of 2010, the pet industry went up. I would challenge anyone to come up with another industry that saw no downturn whatsoever during any of those quarters. So that just shows you the strength of, of this industry. That's it for this episode of Money Talks America. I think I owe our dog Ben here a little rawhide treat. We'll see you next time.